Fake Goodwin here, and eventually we will. So this is going to be my review on Mortal Kombat uh, Legends Scorpion's Revenge. I heard Ed Boon came on to this one as a consultant, which is interesting and probably why it's as ultra-violent as it is. Uh, Warner Brothers, you know, with DC, they put out a lot of films. They don't come out as mature as this one does. This one's ultra-violent. It does do Mortal Kombat justice in that avenue. It's full of brutality, blood, gore, fatalities. Uh, they do go into the x-ray cuts as they d did in the later games. Uh, they do draw their weapons and get into violent, brutal fights with them. So, it does justice in the department of gore and brutality and all that. <laughs> and... It starts out real strong, but it's almost as if this film is two different stories, and they keep undermining each other. So, spoiler warnings, obviously. There's no way to tell this one without really spoilings. Uh, so it starts off with showing Scorpion back when he was alive and human, and it gets into a long, brutal fly, uh, fight with the Lin Kuei who slaughtered his old village and his family. And eventually, he meets his death at the hand of Sub-Zero in a long, brutal, violent fight. And it gets into Scorpion's origins. He ends up in the nether realm being tortured. Not doesn't take him too long to set himself free and take on an army of demons where he meets Quan Chi who quickly hands him his own ass and brokers a deal with him. <laughs> but he brokers a deal with him to be returned to the surface where he can get him this trinket that won't unleash Shinnok. Yeah, and that's the bargain. In order to get his revenge, he's got to get this thing for Quan Chi. But... Shortly after that, the the film goes on to focus on introducing Johnny Cage, Luke Kane, Sonya Blade, and, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's just, it, it takes away from the title character, and the film almost forgets who the title character is in this process as they go on to focus on these Earthrealm heroes and introducing the tournament and all that there are some humorous aspects Johnny Cage has no idea what he's getting himself into he thinks it's a movie and Raiden lets him you know go into this blindly risking his life it, it is humorous to that aspect to that extent and degree but it also introduces a lot of blink and you'll miss characters from the roster that Mortal Kombat has built over the years. There's a lot of characters in the background. There's a lot of characters that just have brief little cameos. You don't really get to see most of them at the forefront. But the film, like I said, it feels like two different stories that keep undermining each other at, the, at their highest potential. So... At first, we're following Scorpion, and then we're we'll more following the heroes of Earthrealm and the tournament and all that. And it's fascinating. It's almost like watching a, a Mortal Kombat one movie, except for once it gets into the tournament, and yeah, you know, like Liu Kang, each one of them, they get immediately transported to their first fights, and those fights don't last too long. And then shortly after that, they make it sound almost as if that was it. Like, Shing Tu Shung even says himself, I didn't think your fighters would get that far. And that's just after them facing one combatant. So, uh, then the film sort of jumps into Black Dragon goons just storming the island, trying to murder Earthrealm's heroes. And Scorpion ends up saving them. And finally getting his fight with Sub-Zero. And, and then it goes on to pretty much undermine all future entries this could have. I mean, uh, it'll, it doesn't prevent them from happening. But it does make them underwhelming. And it spoils a lot of great tension building surprises that could have been used. Like, you could have turned this into a saga of 
MK movies, animated movies that would have been great. One, you know, focused around a specific character. Bet they do a lot of things in here, such as spoil the fact that Quan Chi lied and used Scorpion, and Sub Zero never murdered his family, and he disguised himself as Sub Zero all along. There's just uh, and. A lot of characters in here die. Sonya Blade's uh, first combatant she fights is Reptile. And unfortunately, it's not classic ninja Reptile. <laughs> it's, you know, the Green Skelly Reptile who's actually a Reptile. You know, they didn't start out with the way it was. But I think this film really did itself a disservice. It, it is strong in the brutality department that does justice to Mortal Kombat. But the narrative doesn't really focus on Scorpion, it focuses on him, and it's almost as if at the end of the film it remembers who their title character is, and they focus on him again. <laughs> but overall, I'd have to say it, it's really not that great because you, it doesn't, it's not a great representation uh, of the Mortal Kombat tournament as you only get them facing off against one combatant and then that's it. There, all these fighters showed up, but where are they? What of them? You know, I just think it did a really poor job in that aspect. Uh, it is humorous, it is action packed, it is great in the brutality department, but other than that, you know, it it it's, it takes away from a lot where you could go with this as a franchise of animated films as a saga of animated films uh, certain characters die that would have been great to have around later and you know it, it and it doesn't even, even when it's focused on Luke Kane and all these Earth Realm heroes well it undermines that too while, it, while that story is taking away from the Scorpion story itself the, when it focuses that big portion of the film on just Liu Kang and the Earth Realm heroes, and then finally Liu Kang goes to toe toe to toe with Goro, but he ends up getting defeated, and it's Scorpion who interferes and saves him, and, and that in its own way violates the tournament. That they win the tournament, <laughs> which leads to Shang Hu Shang being considered a failure by Shao Kahn. And I, I just think it was mishandled because Liu Kang doesn't even come off like that great of a fighter when he's he's got to be saved by Scorpion. So it didn't do well showing him as the great champion he's supposed to be. And Scorpion really steals the show. <laughs> Technically, this is his movie anyway, even though it disregards him for a big portion of the time to focus on other characters. And it, it's just really imbalanced. Overall, though, I'd say I'd give it like a 6 out of 10. It is like a bullet. It's enjoyable. And when, when we're not getting any new movies out, considering the circumstances of everything going on right now, it is really worth watching. It is entertaining to, to a degree, but it's nothing to really, you know, <laughs> it's nothing to really feel as one of the best movies there is or anything like that. Uh, I think the actual the first Mortal Kombat movie in the 90s did a better job at depicting the tournament than this film does here. And I didn't know too much about it going in in the first place. I thought it was just going to be focused on Scorpion. And then I was like, oh, oh, so we're doing Mortal Kombat 1. But it didn't do a really good job at doing either one of those. Telling the Scorpion's revenge story or... Telling the Mortal Kombat 1 story. It didn't do a great job in either one of those. It is entertaining. I'll give it that. So 6 out of 10. Like, share. Check out my subscribe star. If you want to support my channel. That's the video guys. Stay awesome. Rock on.